Greetings, Leech followers, fan club, awesome Mustang enthusiasts. Uh, so today's question uh, is is something from a gentleman named Mike uh, that came through on our YouTube channel. So in response to this video, we're just talking about you know general functionality of the idle air control uh, on a Fox Body Mustang. He's basically saying that you know he has an issue where he fires up the car and he, he just has some issues trying to keep the car running without having to pedal it a little bit. Now this, in his case, this is a stock car. It doesn't have a, a tune on it or anything like that. So he's just working within the stock parameters. But uh, but this is his question. He's saying, you know, it fired up this morning, didn't stall, but it almost did. Um, he adjusted the throttle stop screw open a little bit from a, an earlier recommendation I gave just to see if that might help a little bit. Uh, but it sounds like it still just kind of did the same thing. So starts up, revs to a bit over 1,000 RPMs and instantly drops and struggles. So it's wondering why does it do that? Um, what are we dealing with here? So so this video really today is about uh, your startup, your cranking and your startup idle air and how that stuff works and how uh, the computer controls maintaining a, a certain amount of RPMs and then dropping it down. So as always, we're going to jump into binary editor and look at a bone stock A9L. So this is a Fox Body 5-speed mass air uh, configuration and we'll just talk about how the computer did it. So first things first is these numbers right here represent the target uh, desired you know idle RPM. So when when the car is warm and under normal conditions this is where the car is going to idle in a factory tune at 672 RPMs. It's different on an auto, uh, it'd be 624 uh, down in drive. So you're at 672 but when you first start the car, we have to get the car to start first, right? So we have we have the idea of cranking. So during cranking, until the car starts, this is what your idle air valve is doing. So this duty cycle is zero to 100%. 100 means it's open as far as it can be. Zero means the idle air valve is closed. So the first thing you notice is that basically up until we get to 160 degrees coolant temp, it's pretty much maxed out. It's at 99%, which is as high as it's gonna go here. Um, and it has that thing wide open. And then if you're on a hot start up at 180 degrees coolant temp, it's actually only open at 60 and it would taper down between 160 and 180 degrees. So, so that duty cycle will be, you know, a little bit lower here as you transition into higher temps. Um, but this is based on coolant temp while you're cranking. How much is that idle air valve open? So if, if the issue is it's hard to get the car to start at all, not, not about staying running, but just it's hard to get it to catch and actually start at all. You know, this is the part of your tune that might help. Because really, you, you only have cranking fuel and, and cranking uh, idle air. That's about all you can do in these particular strategies. So it's a balance between the two to, to get it to start. Okay, but let's say you get the car to start like he's having, and then it goes to where, you know, RPMs ramp up, and then they kind of fall on their face again, and the car flounders around and struggles. So the next thing you have to think about is your uh, your adders that are going into this idle air valve. So you notice when we go down here to, let me find it, startup RPM versus ECT. So what this is saying is that once the car catches and it gets up to enough RPMs that the car realizes, uh, or the computer realizes the car is actually running now, it's going to add to that 672 RPMs that we would normally idle at, it's going to add this many RPMs. And you notice that this is actually also based on coolant temperature. And I still to this day don't fully understand what Ford's thought was here as to why it has this shape. Like it's, you know, zero degree temperature, they've got a bunch of extra RPMs in it through, you know, freezing up until, you know, about 50, very little RPM adding. A massive amount of RPM here, if it's at 76 degrees, that tapers back down again. I don't know why they did this. Um, I don't know. I, I've thought about this one a lot of times. I have no idea why it's not more linear than this. But regardless, this is what it does. So let's just say hypothetically it's exactly 76 degrees uh, coolant temp when you're starting your car. So what the RPMs are going to do is they're going to jump up right after start until they're at your desired, which is 672, plus whatever this is. So that would be 1,100 RPMs. And the way that it's going to get to 1,100 RPMs 
is just by opening up the thr- the idle air valve a bunch, however much it needs to to get to that point. Um, assuming that it can, because again, you know, it can only go to 100%. So if the, the idle air valve is open as far as it goes, well, you know, if it can't get there, it can't get there. And that would generally indicate that you need to open up that throttle body uh, airflow more by just adjusting the stop screw on the throttle body so that the idle air valve isn't having to work as hard to get there. Um, but again, if everything's perfect, this is what you'd have. Now, so the car's just started and now it's commanding 1100 RPMs. What does it do after that? Well, there's one more thing that, that you have to factor in too uh, that's in addition to that. And that's this number right here, this buzz RPM. So in addition to whatever that function is calculating, we also have another 64 RPMs. So we're gonna go back to our calculator and add another 64. So actually, right when the car starts, this is how many RPMs it's shooting for. Okay. Now, it's gotta hold this for some amount of time and then taper back down until it gets to 672 RPM. So there's, there's really two different numbers factoring into how long does it take to go down. This is the first one. So the first thing that happens is this little buzz RPM, this extra 64 RPMs that it's adding right here, it's going to add that for 10 seconds after the car starts and then it's going to come back off. So that's one thing. But the bigger, longer thing here is this number. So this is the startup kick down time and this is set to 25 seconds from the factory. So the 64 RPMs drops out after 10 seconds, but whatever we were doing over here with this startup idle airflow, this is gonna hold for 25 seconds and then taper off. So that's, that's how this, this initial logic works on a startup uh, for your idle air valve. So if your car is unable to do that, then realistically there's, there's only a couple of reasons why if, if everything else is good, but usually it's gonna mean you need more uh, throttle position. And I'm not talking about adjusting the sensor itself, I'm talking about actually opening up that stop screw on the throttle body so that your throttle blade is open a little bit more even when you're at closed throttle, so more air is getting into the engine all the time. And if that's all set the way it's supposed to be, then you should have enough range with the idle air valve itself so that it can command things like this and then bring this stuff down gracefully. Now, another thing you have to think about too is that the computer has some adaptive learning. It learns over time um, if there are corrections needed to the idle air valve based on wherever you've you know, set that throttle stop screw, whatever your engine is wanting to maintain RPMs. You know, every engine with different cams and whatnot, it's gonna be different. So the computer has an instantaneous correction that's trying to, in the short term, you know, apply corrections to get things to idle the way they're supposed to but it also learns trends over time. So if it realizes it constantly needs more air than it thought it did to get to a certain RPM, then it starts to learn that stuff. So the next time you start the car, it's not having to try to adjust quickly. It's already adjusted to that point approximately. Um, so it can make it kind of drive a little bit better over time and idle better over time. So the reason I'm bringing that up is, you know, Mike, if you go in there and you've been driving this car and it's been wherever it's been, and you suddenly go in there and, and increase that throttle stop, well, you probably want it to unlearn the things that it learned before because it no longer needs to apply those corrections either. And the way that you're going to have to do that without a, a chip on the car is just unplug your battery cables for a few minutes, let the computer drain, all of its keep alive memory will be erased, uh, and then you can you know plug the battery cable back in and go again. The other thing I want to talk about is in your case, Mike, when you're when you're trying to get more air through the throttle body, and you're increasing that throttle stop screw. If you increase that while the car is running, then it's possible that you'll increase it so far that the car is actually going to think you're in part throttle now instead of closed throttle because it understood since the car's been running what's the minimum amount that that throttle blade has been open. So if you start increasing that, it assumes you're doing that with your foot by just hitting the gas pedal. So if if you do adjust it, you really want to do that while the car's off, ideally. Um, or if you adjust it while the car's running and think you got it about where you want it, then go ahead and turn the car off and then restart it. That way that it, it's reset that throttle position and it doesn't think you're in closed throttle because it, or in open throttle. Because if it thinks you're in open throttle, then it's, it's not going to apply its normal idle logic and idle speed control, and uh, that's, that's going to defeat the purpose of what you're trying to tune right now. So that's, that's what I'd recommend you do. Uh, try opening that stuff up a little bit more, then you know drain the battery, 
plug it back in, restart the car, and see where you're at. And ideally, uh, you know, the base idle reset procedure, which I made videos about and, and talked about, that's that exact procedure is really only ideal if your your engine is bone stock. And I'm talking stock throttle body, stock camshaft heads, the whole deal, completely stock engine. It's designed to work well for that. But the concept of the base idle reset can still be applied elsewhere, even if you don't have a stock combo. And the, the fundamental principle there is you know what the target is in the computer. It's 672. So if you're running without a tune, you need to get it that throttle stop to a point that if you have the idle air valve unplugged and you've got your timing locked at 10 degrees by removing the spout connector, you should ha have the car where it's able to stay running on its own with no, no spark control and no idle air. And it should stay running just a touch less than 672. You know, and if you can't get it there, you know, some combos won't do it. I mean, if you have a really rowdy combo and you're running with no tune, that's the kind of stuff where you, you have to have a tune to get it right. But if you do have a tune or you have a stock engine or something close to stock, you should be able to get that to work okay. And you just adjust that screw until it, you know, is approximately happy there. Pull the battery cables one more time, restart the car and see where that gets you. So Mike, give it a shot. Let me know if you need any help. Good luck. Godspeed.